In this video, we're going to talk about how to back up your WordPress website. So I can't express how important it is to back up your website on a regular basis. I back up my site and client sites on a daily basis. Partially just the sites that I'm really working on or making changes to is the ones I back up on a daily basis. And I can tell you backing up a website becomes a nightmare. You have to log into PHP, my admin and download the database. Then you got to download, then you got to zip the files on the server so that you can download the zip files and store them on a, on your local machine or on a thumb drive or on an external storage or in the cloud, all these different things. And it, it becomes a very daunting task. Now I typically don't recommend plugins because most of them aren't built correctly. But when I was approached by WP vivid to look at their plugin and review it, I agreed. Now, so this is a sponsored video by WP Vivid and they make a backup plugin for uh, WordPress. And I'm gonna show you how to use it and I'm gonna use it on all of our sites, which are hundreds of sites. Um, I'm gonna use it on all of our sites to back up because of the features that it has and the, the way it works. I'm blown away with this, with this plugin, it, it's amazing. So I'm gonna show you how to install it show you how to back up a site and even show you how to connect it to a, re a remote location so that you can back up to, you know, Amazon S3, FTP, SFTP, Dropbox and stuff like that. So let's get started. So we're logged into our ideapro.io website, which is the website we use to test plugins, build plugins, build themes, um, kind of test everything out. And the only reason why I'm using this as an example instead of ideapro.com, our main site, is for this video's purpose only. Uh, I've, installed, I, I've installed the plugin on ideapro.com, <clears throat> but it took about 25 minutes to back up that site because it's such a large website. It ended up the total backup being 3.4 gig. And the plugin did it without any problem. But for this video, to make this video a little bit shorter, I wanted to use a site that didn't have as much information in it. Now this site does have a lot in it, and I'll show you in the plugins, we currently have um, 77 plugins on the site, only 25 are active and 52 are inactive. Um, but as far as the media, there's you know, not a whole lot of media in here, just some client stuff that we've tested over time. Um, but as far as the content and stuff like that, there's quite a bit of uh, content pages and posts and stuff like that. So we're gonna go to add new, and then here we're gonna search for WP Vivid, and it pulls up a, the WP Vivid backup plugin here. So we're going to hit install now. And once it's installed, we can hit activate. So once this plugin is activated, it will take us to the WP Vivid backup plugin page. This is the management page um, that we're going to do everything in. So there's backup and restore. So basically, if you back up the website and then it crashes, you can come here and <clears throat> you can reinstall WordPress, reinstall this plugin, and come here to restore it, to restore the, the, the backup. And I'm not gonna get into that today, I'm mainly gonna show you how to backup a plugin. Um, I mean, backup the site. And there's other things too, there's, you can um, restore your site from backup and you can migrate your site. So if you've done the website on a local host and you wanna move it over to your hosting, this plugin will help you do that too with the migrate. So currently this is the backup and restore, then there's schedule, which I'm gonna get into that in just a minute. 
auto migration, which is what we were talking about migrating, remote storage, settings, website info. This is what your website currently is. Um, these are the active plugins. Uh, this is, you know, the site, the URL, the, you know, all the different stuff, whether it, what type of server it is and stuff like that. Most of this you don't have to worry about. Then this is logs and keys and stuff like that. So right now what we're going to do is we're going to back up the database and files. And we're going to leave it on a local backup. So we're just going to hit backup now. And I wanted to show you this like this because we've done no settings whatsoever. Everything is just, we installed the plugin and we just hit backup now. And so it's going to go through and it's going to do everything and then it's going to be complete. So right here it tells that June 24, 2019, which is today, we did a local storage backup and we can actually even hit restore here. So we can download this backup. So hit download. So the backup downloads, and now it's on my local machine. Okay, so we can also delete this. So we've downloaded it to my local machine. I don't want it sitting on the server, even though it's only 50 something meg. So I'm gonna delete it. Okay, so now we've deleted that backup. Now we're going to connect a remote storage and we can do that with FTP, SFTP, Google Drive, Dropbox, Microsoft OneCloud, Amazon S3, DigitalOcean. So we're going to do Dropbox. I use Dropbox for everything. We store all the files in Dropbox. So we're going to use Dropbox. So we're going to say Idea Pro IO Auto Backup. All right. So we're going to authenticate with Dropbox. And I've already logged into Dropbox. If you aren't logged in, it will ask you to log in. So it says WP Vivid Backup Restore would like to access its own folder, apps, WP Vivid Backup Restore inside your Dropbox. Now, if you don't have a folder named apps in your Dropbox, Dropbox is going to create that. And typically anytime you connect an app to Dropbox, it will create that folder. All right, so we're gonna say allow. And that's as simple as it is. If we go back here to remote storage, it now shows down here that we have Dropbox connected to our, to our website <clears throat> or to WB Vivid Backup. All right, so now we're gonna go back up back here to backup and restore. So now we're gonna send backup to remote storage and you show it's, you see the logo is not grayed out anymore. It's now color because we have it connected. And so we're gonna hit backup now. And it's gonna go through its process here. It's gonna tell us what's the, what it, the process that's doing and how much a percentage It'll even tell us the size of the site here. <clears throat> and once it's done, we'll give it just a second here. Now a much larger site is gonna take more time because of the number of files, the size of the files, the number of plugins and stuff like that. This is a, kind of a typical size website really. Um, the ideapro.com site is thousands of media files, um, just a lot of stuff that it's, it, the plugin worked fine, it did a great job doing the backup, just the, it would take much longer to show this in the video. So it should be done now. All right, so now down here we have the backup, which was just done, the storage place, which was Dropbox. The first backup we did showed this local storage here highlighted. And so now we can even download it from here and uh, we can delete it and we can restore it if we want to. 
So now if we go to Dropbox here in Apps, it shows that this folder is empty. If we do a refresh, now we have WP Vivid Backup and Restore. So if we open this, here is that backup. Now if we go over to Dropbox on my computer, we have Apps, WP Backup and Restore. So it's already downloaded, I have a fast internet connection, so it's already downloaded this backup here to Dropbox. <clears throat> and I wanna open up this backup because I wanna show you that you don't necessarily need to restore everything. So let's say you had an image on your site and you accidentally deleted it. And you were like, oh no, I really needed that image and it, it was deleted and it's gone. You don't have to do a complete restore. You can unzip this, fi this file and it gives you all the zip files of each thing. So here we have the content, the, the core of WordPress. Here's a database backup. So if we open this file, close that out. So here's the database. So it's an actual SQL file of the database. And then we have a plugins zip file. We have a themes zip file. We have uploads zip file. So if we open up this upload zip file, go away, and look at this, here's the uploads folder, and this is all the images that we have inside of the media library. So if you have a backup and the um, an image was deleted, you can go to one of your backups, open up this uploads zip file, and find that image and then replace it back in the website. So it doesn't have to be a complete restore from the entire site because there may be pages and content that you've updated since your last backup, but you know that media file is in there, you can go in there and get that media file. All right. So. This is the WP Vivid website, and I'll put that in a link in the description below. So now we have all this backed up. So now we're gonna to go to schedule. And this is really important for me because I do backups so often that if I can schedule it like this, it's going to save me a lot of time. So we're gonna enable backup schedule. And what it says here is scheduled job will start at web server time. So, which may be different than your WordPress time settings, depending on where the server is. So the second thing here says, being subjected to mechanisms of PHP, a scheduled backup task for your site will be triggered only when the site receives at least a visit at any page. Now, what that means is, is a cron job is a job that runs on the server. And you can set that time to run, whether it be a minute, five minutes, every minute, every 30 minutes, every five minutes, um, every hour, every 12 hours, every six hours, once a day, um, at 5.18 a.m. That you can set the cron to run at a, a given time schedule. But to keep you from having to create a, to log into the server, and create a cron manually, what they're using is they're using WP cron, which is a WordPress cron. And the way WordPress crons work is when someone visits a site, visits your site, it triggers to tell WordPress to look and see if there's a job that needs to be ran. So here you can say 12 hours, daily, weekly, um, you know, so let's say you do 12 hours and it's a brand new site, you have no traffic, and it goes 16 hours without someone visiting your website. That will run at that 16th hour, not at the 12th hour, because that cron was not triggered with by someone visiting the site 
at that 12th hour or 13th hour or 14th hour. It didn't, someone didn't, didn't visit the site till the 16th hour. So once someone visits that site, then that, that cron is triggered and the website will, it'll, the plugin will back up. Now, most sites have traffic more often than that, even if it's a small site. And even the Google crawlers or, you know, the search engine crawlers or anything like that will trigger that cron to run. So if you have it set up on a daily or 12 hours, just know that if it's a smaller site, it might not run at 12 hours. If it's a smaller site, how often do you really need to back it up? Do you need to back it up every 12 hours? I would say that a smaller site, you could back up daily or even weekly. All right, so here we're gonna schedule every 12 hours, database an entire site, and we're gonna send it to Dropbox and save changes. All right, so now we've set up a schedule for this to run and it will back up on a regular basis and we won't have to worry about backing it up anymore. All right, so this is very helpful plugin. I'm gonna add it to all of our websites and what's really cool is we can add it to um, individual users backups. So when you log into a website, say it's a client's website, you can say, hey, if you have you know, OneDrive or Dropbox or Amazon S3, which we set up Amazon S3 for all of our clients. All of our media files are on a CDN using the Amazon S3. And typically it's their own S3 bucket, you know, whether it's um, on their Amazon cloud system or on our cloud system. So we can move that back up to their S3 bucket. Now, what's good about that is, you know, hey, it's another selling point for a client. Hey, we automatically back up your site. We've set up S3 in your Amazon account and the site will automatically back up the database and files to your S3 bucket. So, Want to know your comments about the plugin when you use it in the you know in the comments below. Subscribe and like this video. Remember to hit the bell for future videos, and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks.